Hi everyone, Nick Russo here, and welcome back to the BGP multi-homing series. Our first use case combines a full mesh of iBGP peers within AS65000 with the desire for equal cost multipath or ECMP towards R6. We briefly explored the iBGP full mesh design in the previous video. ECMP has two key advantages. Installation of multiple routes in the rib and fib, which improves availability, and load sharing, which allows a greater quantity of traffic to flow across the network. The iBGP design ensures that all four routers in AS65000 can exchange BGP learned routes directly. While this design is both uncommon and scales poorly, it lets us focus on BGP egress routing and not on route propagation, which I discuss later. Note that R3, a provider core router, must also run iBGP because the network is not yet running MPLS. For simplicity, all provider edge devices use Nexthop Self, and all internal links have an IS to IS cost of 10. Zooming into the routers of greatest interest, let's explore the routing flow. R6 advertises the 2001 DB8 6/128 prefix to both R4 and R5 using eBGP. The route has no customized attributes or communities. R4 and R5 both select this eBGP route as their best paths and advertise it to all other iBGP peers, such as R2, R3, and to each other. R3 is the core router that must decide whether to send traffic to R4 or R5 and is therefore the device that must be configured to install both paths. Thanks to Nexthop Self, the other AS65000 routers have IS to IS routes to each BGP Nexthop as illustrated in the diagram, making it easy to explore and troubleshoot. Before we jump into the demo, you should know about my Cisco Advanced Routing courses at Pluralsight. Rather than teach various topics in isolation, I developed unique, large-scale topologies to illustrate how the technologies interact. If you need to brush up on your routing protocols, tunneling techniques, or management services, click the link in the video description to get started. Now, on to the demo. Starting on R3, the provider core router, I've displayed the BGP configuration. There's still a full mesh of iBGP peers, and R3 is part of that mesh. At the bottom, we see the IPv4 and IPv6 address families, both of which are activated towards R2, R4, and R5. I've also added the maximum paths IBGP2 command to each address family. This is how ECMP is enabled within BGP. By default, this value is set to 1, which only allows BGP to offer a single route, the best path, for installation into the rib. Let's check the IPv6 BGP table to see what's changed. The iBGP route to R6's loopback via R4 is still the best path, as indicated by the greater than sign. The other route via R5 has the lowercase m flag, which means multipath according to the legend. Let's dig deeper into this specific prefix to examine the attributes. As discussed previously, no BGP policies have been applied, so these routes are equal in every way except for their BGP nexttops, neighbor addresses, and neighbor router IDs. There are strict criteria for allowing non-best paths to be considered as iBGP multipath candidates. All the BGP best path selection attributes must be equal up to and including the iGP metric to the BGP next top. After that, the iBGP tiebreakers are evaluated, which can be overridden with multipath. Since these two routes have identical BGP attributes, multipath can be enabled. We confirm that it worked by checking the routing table for the R6 loopback prefix. We see two iBGP routes here, one via FC00 colon colon 4, and one via FC00 colon colon 5, which represent R4 and R5 respectively. We can also check the FIB using show IPv6 Ceph to ensure they've been programmed for forwarding. When written in the FIB, the next hop link local addresses and egress interfaces are also included for faster forwarding, and this information is correct per our network diagram. 
Let's head to R2, the Ingress PE, which is also configured with IEBGP Multipath. I've displayed the IPv6 BGP table, and R6's loopback prefix is Multipath Capable as indicated by the lowercase m flag. Let's check the RIB to ensure both routes were installed. As expected, both routes are present, just like on R3. Let's finish up by checking the FIB, and I'll append the detail keyword. We see both routes here, each one recursively available via a different IBGP next hop. However, the actual next hop in the forwarding path is the same for each route, which is R3's link local address on Ethernet 0 slash 1. Why? Because R2 only has one path to reach R4 and R5, both of which route through R3. For this reason, multipath isn't doing much on R2, which is why it's important to consider your core topology when trying to optimize BGP forwarding in non-MPLS environments. Last, let's head to R6 to quickly review eBGP multipath. I've displayed the BGP configuration, which has two eBGP peers into AS65000 through R4 and R5 for both IPv4 and IPv6. Enabling multipath is similar, except you must omit the word iBGP from the command. Let's examine R6's BGP entry for 2001 db 8 colon colon 1 slash 128, which is R1's loopback. For eBGP multipath, all the attributes must be the same up to and including the neighbor type. The eBGP tiebreaker of choosing the oldest route is overridden by multipath in this context. Let's quickly check the fib to ensure the routes have been installed correctly. Okay, R6 is able to use both R4 and R5 when sending traffic to R1 across AS65000.